Hello and welcome to Physical Sciences uh, session. My name is Tembe Nube. Today we are focusing our attention on a very exciting, you know, uh, kind of a session whereby, we'd, we, you know, I'll be giving you clues uh, which have to do with the physical properties of materials. At the end, we want to identify, you know, a, a specific type of material based on those physical properties. So it's going to be uh, uh, very exciting. Uh, hence, I uh, would say, would refer to the name as a game that matters, it's, 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 you know, it's kind of a, a catchy phrase. Let's see what exactly this is all about. Right, okay, so in terms of the concept map or, you know, the mind map, uh, and as far as, you know, uh, matter is concerned, our focus today is on physical properties of materials. However, as I've indicated, we'll do it in a somewhat different way. I'll be giving you, dropping some clues. You know, at the end of the day, we must identify a material that we'll call X for now, based on those uh, physical properties. So our understanding of the physical properties therefore becomes very uh, critical. Right, okay, so it's a classification challenge, as I've put it out there. It says here uh, is a list of six substances, okay? You can think of them as materials. We've got sodium chloride, okay, that's one. We've got copper, we've got sulfur, we have got water, we've got chlorine, and we have silicon. So there is a total of six substances. So what's going to happen here, I'll be dropping some clues you know, along the way, such that we must identify a uh, uh, material or substance X from the six that is given. So our understanding of the physical properties will be very important in terms of, you know, guiding us to the correct uh, uh, substance in terms of identifying it. So it has a lot to do with the classification. So along the way, we shall be eliminating. Okay, so as we eliminate at the end of the day, we'll be left with the correct one at the end, and then we can say, okay, material X is whatever of the six that is uh, given to us, okay? Hence, we are saying it's actually a classification challenge, right? Okay, so um, they all have different properties, these uh, materials that we've listed, the six of them, and our focus is on the physical properties, okay? And you remember very well, when we talk about physical properties, we are talking about the macroscopic uh, you know, uh, properties of materials. That has to do, you know, with electrical conductivity, density, you know, malleability, ductility, you know, boiling points, melting points, the list goes on. So think along those lines as we talk about, you know, the microscopic particles, uh, properties of materials, which is exactly uh, what we'd refer to as the physical properties. Right, so the way particles are arranged will also be different. Now, let's, let's understand something. Uh, which is very important. Uh, the packaging of materials will definitely influence the physical properties. So if the packaging is different, then it follows that uh, are also the physical properties of these materials that we've listed, the six of them, would obviously differ. Now we'd look at one property at a time and begin to eliminate as we go along. Right. Okay, so what do we have? We've got substance X. So substance X is unknown, okay? Let this unknown substance be X, okay? I think we're familiar with that approach. It says substance X has properties like one of our six substances, okay? Right? So it means, in other words, X is one of the six that is given, okay? It says there are no particles in X that are not present in uh, the six substances. It means now, let's go back to the basics. All matter consists of particles. So if substance X consists of particles, all these other ones, because in their own right, they are also different forms of matter. It also means that they are also made of particles. But how these particles are arranged, you know, uh, uh, and the behavior of these particles will obviously differ. Why is it so? Because these are different materials or substances, right? And then it says there are no particles in X that are not present in the six substances. We're still saying the same thing. All the six substances, including X, uh, uh, is made up of particles, right? So our challenge, okay, that's the main thing, is to work out what substance X is. So at the end of this session, we must be able to identify substance X, okay? So this will be based on the clues about its physical properties. So pay careful attention to the physical properties that will be given and try uh, along the way to eliminate in as far as the six 
substances that are given. So at the end of the day, we are able to say, yes, indeed, X is this based on the physical properties that we shall look at one time, uh, you know, at one at a time, right? And then it goes further and says, okay, this is about physical properties. So emphasis is on the macroscopic part, uh, uh, properties of material. So we would say these are macroscopic particles, uh, macroscopic uh, uh, um, properties of materials, okay? So this is what it's all about, okay? Right. And then the keywords, because language is very important, it is the tool of the trade. So we shall use the very, uh, 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 some of the terms once too often than others. The term element will be very common. You know, elements are particles that make up, you know, substances. And these elements are actually made up of atoms of the same kind, okay? So we also know something about compounds, which is a combination of elements uh, 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 that are joined together. So it's something that we already know by this time, okay? So and when you talk of elements, hence we talk about the periodic table of elements. So any substance that is in the periodic table is actually an element. So hence we would refer to it as the periodic table of element. Okay? So it means that all those materials or substances in the periodic table, they consist of the same type of atom. Okay, so an element has got the same type of building blocks or units, which we call the atoms. We'll talk about that. So here's a, an extract of a periodic table. And I think from our earlier uh, uh, studies, we'd remember that we've got, you know, the, the vertical columns, which we refer to as groups, as well as the horizontal rows that we referred to as, uh, 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 you know, the periods. And also, we, we managed at, at an earlier grade to also look at, you know, uh, um, the first 20 elements. So whatever is in the periodic table, it is an element because we refer to it precisely as the periodic table of elements. Right, okay? So there's nothing new about that, okay? So we are saying that elements in the same group have similar properties. So group one elements, that's the first column, have got these elements, your hydrogen, lithium, sodium, you know, they've got the same type of properties, okay? So the groups, they go vertically downwards, okay? And then the periods, they actually go horizontally from left to right. So from top to bottom, we've got groups, and then from left to right, we've got what? Periods, okay? So this is the period, okay? Hence, we call it the periodic table, okay? Now, elements in the same group have similar properties, and it can be physical or a, 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 a chemical properties, but our attention for now is purely on the physical properties, okay? Now, what else do we know about the periodic uh, table of elements, just to remind ourselves of it? Elements in the same period have different properties. This is very, very important. Initially, we say that elements that are in the same group, they exhibit or show similar similarity in terms of properties. But then if we go across from left to right, we are saying that in the periods, because the elements in the same period are actually in different groups, hence their physical properties will definitely vary or differ from each other, right? So elements in the same period have different properties. That's a very important one. And then the pattern of properties is repeated for each period. Hence, this uh, has to do with what we call periodicity, right? So if you talk about periodicity, we talk about the repeat in terms of the properties of materials within a period. The trend is repeated for every period. Hence, we call it the periodic table, right? Right. And then furthermore, let's look at a simple example, the pattern of melting points. Okay. If you check carbon, silicon, and germanium, they are actually in the same group, and you realize that their melting point for each of the periods is actually comparatively greater than the elements within the same period. And what's so common about carbon, silicon, and germanium, if we go back to our periodic table, you see that carbon, silicon, and germanium are actually in the same group, okay? So the physical properties of those materials is actually the same. But if you look at the periods in which each one of them is, it, it falls. Obviously, uh, they'll, they'll differ in terms of the, the, the physical properties. So the main thing here is that elements within the same group 
have got similar physical properties, while within the same period, they would obviously differ, right? So that's the main idea that we want to uh, uh, kind of carry across, right? Now, this is the pattern of melting points. Remember what we, we, we would have d uh, understood in terms of the melting point, the temperature that a material uh, uh, changes from one phase or state to the other. And that's also an indication of the strength in terms of the physical properties. So if you take for argument's sake, copper, which has plus minus 1,084 degrees Celsius melting point versus that of water, which is like zero degrees Celsius. Now it says to us that this copper has a comparatively greater strength as a physical property in comparison to water. So there's a lot that we can derive in terms of the physical properties based on these trends, right? Okay, so here the melting points of elements in period three. If you look at sodium and magnesium, aluminum, silicon, they are in the same period. It means they fall in the same, you know, horizontal row. Okay, as you go from sodium to silicon, what is happening? The melting point uh, is, is getting higher and higher. And then if you go next to, if, for, you know, potassium, phosphorus to argon, the trend is downwards. So this is what we mean in terms of patterns and trends in as far as periodicity is concerned. So it says within a group, the physical properties are more or less the same, while within, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a period, the physical properties will obviously differ, right? Okay, so here's a list of the six substances which you have already uh, uh, looked at, the six substances, okay? The, the game is about, uh, you know, classifying and also at the end of the day, identifying what substance X is, okay? The question is, are any of the substances elements, okay? What is an element? An element is a material or a substance that consists of atoms of the same kind. And where do we find elements, you know, in our sources? It's in the periodic table of elements. So that's the main question, think about that, okay? So if that's the case, all elements, copper is a metal, okay? Uh, you'd understand if copper is a metal, it means copper is also an element, okay? There is copper, okay? Element number 29, okay? Silicon is also uh, another, um, you know, uh, element because it consists of the atoms of the same kind, okay? And then moving forward, okay, silicon is a semi-metal, okay? So in other words, in terms of classification, all metals will be more to the left of the periodic table while to the right we've got non-metals, okay? While in between there's a collection of few are, uh, uh, you know, semi-metals or metalloids. So the term semi-metal suggests that the material has got a combination of metallic and non-metallic properties. So the words semi-metal and metalloids will actually be used interchangeably to refer to the same thing. So metalloids are semi-metals, semi-metals are metalloids. So the, the, the two terms are referred to one and the same thing, right, okay? And then we've got chlorine, which is a non-metal, okay? There is our chlorine, okay? Element number 17, it is a non-metal. It falls far to the right of the periodic table. And um, if you look at the group, they are in group seven, okay? And this one is in, actually in period three. So chlorine is in group seven. So we'd expect, like we've said, chlorine to have more or less similar physical properties to fluorine, bromine, iodine, because they fall in the same group. So chlorine is a non-metal by classification, right? And then uh, we also have compounds as part of the keyword. You don't find compounds in the periodic table. However, the constituent, uh, you know, are, are components that make up a compound are in the periodic table because these are essentially the elements. So elements, that are joined together, you know, they form compounds, okay? And these elements must be different, okay? So there is, uh, um, the, in the list that were given, what elements present in the compounds uh, is one of our six substances. Let's identify the substances that are actually um, compounds. We've got sodium chloride. Sodium chloride actually consists of sodium and chlorine. So this is a compound in the sense that it's more than one element that is chemically uh, uh, joined together. Okay, the other one is obviously 
water, which is another compound, right? Okay, and then having said that, okay, we also appreciate that uh, we are able now to go back to the periodic table and ask ourselves important questions in as far as what are these substances? What, what elements make up those particular substances? Now, the six substances that have been given to us, we further more or less have an understanding in terms of classification. Are they elements? Are they compounds? We have managed to uh, actually arrive at that kind of an understanding. Having said that, let's take a short breather. Then when we come back, we'll start dropping the clues and trying to eliminate so that ultimately we remain with our substance X. Let's take a short breather for now. Mm -hmm. 